Namibia usually evokes images of vast, barren landscapes, desert wildlife, and friendly local tribes. Apparently, the roads are quite amazing and you can camp just about anywhere. This surely then is an overlander's paradise. Join us in this three-part series as we head to northern Namibia to find out. This 29-day adventure will see us cover more than 6,000 kilometers across South Africa, Botswana and Namibia. We'll camp at 15 different locations, cross four different borders and spend more than 100 hours just driving. We start off in central Botswana and the Okavango, enter Namibia via the Caprivi, follow the Kuneni River into Kuakoland, tackle some hectic mountain passes down to the Marienfluss, visit Itosha National Park and finally head back through central Namibia and western Botswana. Uh, we don't know where we're going today. We're going to try to go to Karmarana Sanctuary. It's apparently full. Um, but we're going to find out. If not, we're going to try and push to Kubo Island. Good morning. Yeah, reading you loud and clear. Ah, uh, we're on our way to Stockport, then uh, Botswana, and then Namibia. I'm very excited. Let's get doing it. Namibia, a destination we've never been to, and you asked for it. With excitement levels at an all-time high, we head out of South Africa for today's destination, a favorite of ours, Karma Rhino Sanctuary, a mere 30 kilometers from the town of Siroi. So we are here at uh, Karma Rhino Sanctuary and it's absolutely fantastic. You know what's so weird? We just pulled up to Malema Pan, which is a favorite of ours. And um, if I tell you there were 10 vehicles, I'm not joking. So nice to see all of you there enjoying the waterhole. It is amazing. Coming to Kamarana Sanctuary is fully booked. It's 21 campsites and they're fully booked, which I've never seen in or heard of in my life, ever. In the four years I've been coming here, we've never, I've never experienced a fully booked Kamarana Sanctuary. And we're just enjoying, you know, we're just enjoying. And as a, as a one night stopover, yeah, it'll do, it'll do. Karma Rhino Sanctuary at this time of the year, being October, doesn't really look at its best. Oranges, browns and yellows with trees having shed their leaves with winter just passed. But none of that matters when you make a beeline for the waterholes, for a spot of wildlife viewing. It's so good to be back in Botswana. Awesome is this. So we got to Karma and the campsite was full. So what we did is we waited until the end of day to find out if there were any cancellations. And um, fortunately there were. And the cancellation is in our favorite campsite, number nine just brilliant I haven't been in this campsite for a while so let's enjoy it what a day what an absolute day I tell you guys we almost stayed at the picnic site the bloody picnic site and if you know anything about karma the picnic site is not ideal it's got day visitors and we as much as we love people we love camping alone and I tell you what we came out of a game drive and here we are Campsite number nine. Someone cancelled. Thank you to whoever cancelled number nine. We love you. Because the last time we were here, three and a half years ago, 
and we're back as Overlanding Escape heading to Namibia 2022. Yeah, so um, time to start a fire and relax to the perfect day as Overlanding Escape. Start the fire and we'll see you guys in the morning when we head to Maun. Morning, Ed. Morning, how's it? How did you sleep? Yeah, lekker, eh? Yeah, pretty warm. Uh, October now, so we're coming out of winter. And it was pretty warm. And it's awesome to wake up to the sounds of the Franklins this morning. Crested Franklin and uh, Natal Franklin. But uh, yeah, we're going to get going fairly early. we still got time for some breakfast and a shower. And we head up north to Mau. Morning, Ryan. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. How are you? I'm very well. I'm out in the bush. Did um, you sleep nicely? Sleep very well. So yeah, it's a good day. And the bush sounds this morning? It's amazing. Uh, this place uh, is really nice. Uh, especially, just listen to that. Really nice. So boys, we've uh, we stayed at campsite number nine, and the last time we stayed there was three years. How how did you guys find Karma? Yeah, um, I was quite surprised how busy it is. It was actually uh, fully booked. Uh, we tried our luck because uh, we didn't want to stay uh, anywhere else. Um, they first wanted to put us in the picnic site, which wasn't ideal. But then luckily they had a cancellation. And we were in our favorite campsite, number nine. Yeah, it's a stunning campsite under two massive trees. And um, yeah, it, it is wild at Karma. You can have leopard and rhino and, and a whole lot of other stuff through the camp. And we saw evidence of antelope that had come through the camp last night. But a peaceful evening listening to the pearl spotted owl and the fiery neck night jars. First night in the African bush. Um, normally this is the start of an epic Botswana adventure, but this is actually the start of an epic Namibian adventure. Yeah, so Namibia 2022, we've got four nights in Botswana and uh, then we enter into Namibia at Shakawi, which is uh, quite exciting. But today we onwards march to Sitatunga campsite and mount about what, 400, 400 kilometers, Chris? About a five hour drive, uh, it's mostly tar, so well, I think it's all tar, so nothing uh, to stress about really. Uh, we're definitely going to stop at Letlakani. First, I suspect there might be a Nando's burger in order. <laughs> Nando's burger, Letlakani, and fuel, my man. Uh, long day's drive, eh? 700 kilometers yesterday. How did you find it, Ed? A long drive, not too bad. Uh, we came through the Stockport border which is considerably better and quieter than Martin's Drift at the moment with all the trucks going through there so that's a win there is a, d a dirt road on the other side around 45 kilometers but it is a very good dirt road but yeah happy days that we got through the border half an hour you now don't need any COVID regulation tests or, or anything to get through so we breeze through long day but uh, it's always rewarding when you get to Karma you don't feel tired at all the second you pull into the gate uh, today's drive pretty uneventful uh, you go past a couple of salt pans around Mapipi and Rock Corps and then we go to Sitatunga camp which is a stunning camp outside of Maun around uh, eight eight kilometers outside and it's you know it's a lot quieter than the other camps in Mount. so yeah happy days looking forward to getting there and enjoying the the amazing campsite magic my man all right boys well let's get to Mount. actually let's get to Letlakani that Nando's burger Chris now I can't uh, stop thinking about it man yeah it's calling eh 100% 
an early morning rise and with coffees in hand we head out of Karma. But as luck would have it, we soon pick up a bit of a snag. So we're here, I think 100 k's before Letlakani with a bit of a car issue. Um, in the last 10 minutes, my fuel gauge has dropped from half to zero, to empty, so which is impossible. That's essentially dropped 40 liters of diesel in the last 10 minutes. Unfortunately, we don't have any extra fuel, so shame. Chris has gone back to Sarawi to get two dairy cans so we can fill up the 100. And we, what we think is that there was an airlock in the tank. We're not sure, we're not mechanics. But then somehow that airlock got released and now it's giving the true value of the fuel. But it also means that when I filled up in um, Lepalale yesterday, they charged me for a full tank and only filled up half. There's no ways I would have drained a full tank between Lepalale and here. It's impossible. So yeah, we'll find out. If we add 40 liters of fuel and the fuel gauge is right, then we know it was just an airlock. But yeah, we, uh, we don't want to risk it. I'm a bit over car issues at the moment, to be honest. Hopefully it's not an issue, it's just an airlock. Next stop is Letlakhani, an hour's drive from our stop point. We still have around four hours of driving to go to reach the Sitatunga bush campsites as we head northwest, passing the towns of Rakops, Tumaha, and Matopi. A tough day on the road, but what a sunset as we are greeted by the early evening smells of firewood burning on the edges of Maun. We made it as Ed guides us to the tranquil and quiet campsites of Sitatunga on the banks of the river where the Tamalakani River becomes the Boteti River. Magic. So Ed, how is Sitatunga camp? I'm sorry boys, we got very very unlucky. I, I sold it as this quiet place, you know, it's not like the other camps inside of Maun. It's a bit further out, it's quiet. The Scops Isle going off in the background, the bats. And then we arrived here to, I think they've just finished a rally of some sort. Next level noisy. But it's not always like this, eh? No, 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 no. Just when I want to show my mates <laughs> how quiet and peaceful it is. After another long day's drive yesterday, uh, we woke up this morning and um, Ed promised us cappuccinos and we, we, we're sipping on some nice filter coffee and we got to go back into Mound, fill up with some fuel um, and I think we're going to hit the jerry cans. Now we, everyone we've spoken to has said that this Shakawi road is very, very, very bad, mm. in a bad way. Um, so, yeah, you know, we're a bit nervous about that. That'll probably be the first test on the vehicles and the rigs and then Shakawi River Lodge. So, yeah, excited. Lots of driving at the moment, but we knew that going in uh, Namibia is far. That's the only thing from South Africa. It's quite a drive, any which way you cut it. Um, so we're trying to make the most of it, but we obviously have to get to Namibia uh, to start showing you that. Um, but yeah, no, it's exciting. The 370-kilometer drive is mostly along the A35, and that is the worry. 
this should take around five hours, but we're just not sure. So this next stretch of road is all very new to us and there is a sense of intrepidation amongst the three. The adventure and possibility of staying in new and amazing campsites is finally happening along the main river that flows into the Okavango Delta Panhandle. The Kubango River, with Shakawi River Lodge and campsites locked into the Garmin, we make tracks. We arrive at one of northern Botswana's gems, Shakawi River Lodge. Arriving at the lodge is special as we are greeted with incredible scenery alongside the Okavango River. We grab a great bite to eat and enjoy the opportunity to cool off before setting up camp. The lodge is an absolute treat after a few long days of hard driving. Shikawi River Lodge has both chalet and camping accommodation and we can highly recommend both. The campsites are on the bank of the river and the views are amazing. This is definitely one of our new favorite campsites. We've reached uh, Shikawi River Lodge after another long day's drive. Um, the Shikawi Road is really bad. It's uh, very potholed and a lot of sections you have to actually get off the tar because there's so many potholes you have to drive on the, the shoulder. But not bad. Um, I couldn't show you much of Sitatunga because we uh, arrived there late at night and we had to leave early morning. So some tough drives getting into Namibia from South Africa, uh, especially if you're going to northern Namibia. Um, Shikawi River Lodge, really, really, really nice campsite. So definitely have a look for my campsite review coming soon. The dominating feature of this area is the mighty Okavango River. It stretches some 1,600 kilometers southeastward from here as it runs into the Okavango Delta. Nature and bird life in this area is truly spectacular.
stunning campsite. Bird life is very average. <laughs> Going for a boat ride a little later on, uh, quite looking forward to that. Uh, uh, really, really nice campsite as I said. Uh, they've got very nice facilities at the lodge as well. Uh, if you don't want to camp, there's some really nice chalets, there's a swimming pool, there's a restaurant, there's Wi-Fi. So a nice break from bush camping. Boat cruises can be booked at the lodge and we highly recommend taking one of these. I, I, I bet, I bet a case of St. Louis beers, Ryan catches nothing. Santos, you heard that, eh? We're gonna set up the big guns. Ed reckons I can't catch fish and he's probably right. But we're still gonna try. It is the best way to see the area, get access to great fishing spots and get up close to bird life. Very significant moment for me seeing the pearls fishing out for the first time properly for the first time mm -hmm. I saw it at Tuli Wilderness it just flew away yeah, Shakawi is one of the best places to see these phantoms of the Okavango they are highly endangered they are believed to only be around 100 pairs of pearls fishing owls in the entire Delta Every time you get the camera on them, they fly. But it is awesome. After 12 years of searching, we've seen two different ones here already. So, happy days. Let's get a couple of shots of them and then uh, head back onto the boat. It's amazing. We had the Pels fishing owl, and now we've got the African skimmers. Same as the ones we saw at Chobi, so what a win. African skimmers are also threatened because of their vulnerable and declining breeding populations. The Okavango River offers great fishing opportunities. Tigerfish especially are found in the open, crystal clear waters which offer unforgettable fishing for the novice and the experienced angler alike. We seem to be struggling a little though. Wow, man. Which one, this Ryan one? has been <laughs> fighting now. Use that short fat one, bro. Yeah, the short fat one. Chris and I are giving our professional fishing <laughs> advice to, to Ryan while drinking nice gin and tonics. I oh, mean, they're just saying choose the short fat one. I think they're talking about me, my man. <laughs> I don't know, bro. <laughs> well, man, look it at looks that thing. <laughs> man, I don't even know how to fish with that thing. <laughs> I would have got into the reeds. <laughs> you see that? The short fat one floats. There's no other sunsets like Africa. Magic. quiet on the water with the breeze in your face and the warm sun on your back. This was an amazing day.
today we head into Namibia. At a really good stay at Chikawi River Lodge. Uh, we're on our way to Chikawi now to refuel and then onto the Mahembu border post and onto Rundu. It's time to hit the road again, but we had a great two day stay. We're heading further up the A35 to the Mahembu border post. Once we're in Namibia, we then take the B8 through Bobwatwa National Park on the way to Rundu. This is our last fuel stop in Botswana. We also fill up extra fuel here as it's cheaper than in Namibia. We soon hit the Mahembo border post. It's a pretty seamless process and we soon on Bobwatra's dirt roads. We're planning to stay here on our return leg. It's a sunny 48 degrees Celsius today. another four hours of rural yet surprisingly busy roads until we reach Rundu. All right so obviously we pulled into Rundu now when doing a big trip like this 28 day trip and 20 of those days are in Namibia a place you've never been to and you've adhered to the not bringing meat in from other countries like we have with fruit and veg and dairy products and we've been very diligent on that and we've actually said you know what we're going to try this trip and we're going to try and buy our stuff for 20 days in a town in Namibia and um, we've just done that and I'll tell you what Rundu is a busy town and it's not a small one it's quite big there's a lot of asian influence in the uh, buildings and the main road that goes through the town is busy 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 so yeah we just popped into a shop right and we bought some meat that you know we're not so sure on we've got high hopes but it's not from a butcher and yeah we're hoping quality is good we'll see how it goes and then we obviously bought all our perishables tomatoes onions potatoes cucumbers and the stuff that um, the body body will start needing So we just came out of Rundu and um, we've got 23 k's to go to get to the camp and when you know we're heading to a camp and you see any wood, first wood stop and get. And we've just come across this little farm stall here where all the ladies are selling their fresh, fresh produce 
some uh, elephant grass and some nice looking bundles of wood. So we've got old Ed. He's going to load it up on the easy on roof rack. So now oh, we keep him busy. You know? I'm filming, Chris is helping and Ed's loading. And the sun is beginning to set. I'm a bit parched. camp in Namibia is Taranga Safari Lodge. We booked no campsites in advance other than Etosha on this trip. We're going on recommendations and what we find on Tracks for Africa and iOverlander. Originally going to stay here for two nights, but we decide to push on to Ruakana and ultimately Ipupa Falls. We uh, made it to Rundu yesterday, yes, late yesterday afternoon. We had to uh, stock up and we stayed one evening at uh, Taranga Safari Lodge. I can't really show you much because it was late and it's another early morning. We are on our way to Umbalantu uh, Boabab tree campsite, which is sort of halfway between here and Upupa Falls, a uh, six hour drive, so another tough one, and then another six hour drive tomorrow, so no shortage of driving here. Driving alongside the Kuneni River, we have a 580 kilometer distance to travel. All on tar roads, this should take us a good six and a half hours to do. But be wary, there is the odd traffic stop on entrance to major towns. Long days on the road are beginning to mount up as we finally reach our camp for the night, some six hours later. We search tracks for Africa and find a campsite just on the outskirts of the town Ruakana. Okapika Lodge and Tented Camp. So, um, we are supposed to spend two nights at Taranga, but campsite was so-so, so we pushed on to Okupika, which is just outside um, Ruakana. So we did about 560 kilometers today, so we've broken most of the drive to Epupa Falls. It is very strange though, it's not really a campsite. You can stay in some tented camps. Um, they've got like three by three meter bow tents here but we're staying in our own tents and just using the bathrooms but uh, yeah, it's probably the strangest campsite we've ever stayed in but bathrooms are clean they work it's cheap it's safe and yeah tomorrow a poop of force yeah it's quite a quirky place um it's it's well run it's a community camp obviously and they you can see they actually care and they really look after the place um it is a bit strange we effectively camping in a crawl but uh, it's quite nice. We had barking geckos just now. We had some guinea fowl. Uh, but then you've got goats and donkeys, obviously, as well. Uh, but yeah. The one thing that amazes us on this stretch of road is the population density along the riverside Kuneni. But it's made clear when you realize that the Angola borderline is a mere 8 kilometers to the north of the road C45. It's a four and a half hours drive to Ipupa via the C35 and C43. We however want to take the D3700 that runs along the Kuneni River and the Angola border, but we're not sure about the road conditions. 
However, we're looking forward to getting on some dirt roads finally. We fill up in the town of Ruakana. This is our last fuel stop until Puros, some 900 kilometers away. But always good to know that the fuel is readily available at all major towns, as we'd heard that it might be a bit of a mission to fill up in this part of Namibia. We'd advise you to fill up jerry cans as soon as you can. Puros is a long way off, and we know that the driving conditions aren't going to be easy. We're at uh, Ruakana on the way to Epupa Falls and today it starts to get beautiful we head into the Kawako Felt and last fuel stop Rukwana so topping everything up including jerry cans and then we're heading to Epupa Falls uh, we're still trying to work out the routes because apparently there's a very hectic route that takes 11 hours and a very chilled route that takes four hours uh, which is the one we're gonna take so yeah A moment we've been waiting for some six days later, we finally hit the dirt and the change in scenery is not only welcome, but spectacular. The road C45 now becomes the D3700. The gravel roads on the way to Pupa Falls is simply put bliss. Very easy going, but keep an eye out for oncoming traffic, especially over blind rises. And yes, there are plenty as the driving just gets better and better. kilometers and the GPS's have actually taken us down the 4x4 track to Epupa Falls. Now I think this takes, it might take a couple of days to get to Epupa on this stretch uh, but what we did is we've just veered onto the 4x4 track and then there is a road or a couple of roads back onto the main drag but the reason we've done this is to come down to the beautiful Kuneni, Kuneni River and it is just magic. Driving along the banks of the Kuneni is a surreal experience and something that should be cherished. Take it easy and enjoy the adventure. Yeah. 
what a sight at the Apupa Falls viewpoint and it really is a fantastic moment for the three of us and more to the point a massive sense of achievement we've overland traveled the furthest north and westerly than we've ever been before and our vehicles well they have now put some serious mileage on the rubber We've reached uh, Ipupa Falls, uh, quite a nice drive actually, a uh, very nice gravel road uh, all along the Kaneni River. Um, we were told that the road's really bad, but it was actually pretty good. Um, there's some small 4x4 sections which you can get onto, um, those are quite rocky, but very nice around the Kaneni River. We're staying at the Morunga uh, campsite, there's uh, three campsites here, the Ipupa community uh, campsite, Ipupa Falls larger themed campsite and then Umarunga uh, all really nice on the river and you can actually see the, the falls falls are spectacular have a look at this The Kuneni River flows from the Angolan Highlands south to the border with Namibia. It then flows west along the border until it reaches the Atlantic Ocean. We wish we had enough time to head to Kuneni River mouth on this trip, but it just was not possible. It is one of the few perennial rivers in the region. It is about 1,050 kilometers long with a drainage basin of 106,560 square kilometers in the area. There are ancient baobab trees alongside the gorge and these are spectacular. The river also does have a large population of crocodiles. There are over 60 known species of fish in the Kuneni River, but the Kuneni is westerly flowing, so there is no tiger fish. Setting up camp right on the banks of the Kunenian River is something special, but we are absolutely shattered. And with that, 
we enjoy a few refreshments that night around the fire. Morning, Ryan. Hey, morning, my man. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm very good, eh? I'm very, very good, man. Um, I don't know the name of this place, but we had one of Gondwana's lodges and campsites. And uh, yeah, we sleeping not too far away from the Pupa Falls. I think you can actually hear it in the audio. And we're just making a cup of coffee. And then we're gonna take a walk and see what's what. And what's really lacking is a lady came around and she took our laundry, which is because I don't like washing clothes out in the bush, it's a job. But yeah, some milk, some good coffee, and then off we go. The Omaronga camp offers a few campsites right on the river. These are smallish sites but have all the basic amenities. The camps at Epupa Falls can get quite busy, as this is a popular tourist destination, but most people only seem to stay a day or two. We're taking a well-deserved break from all the driving. It does get really hot here, so the pool is also very welcome. Besides that Ipupa is difficult to reach, and it's a fairly major tourist attraction, we'd still recommend you visit here if you're in the Koako land. The atmosphere at camp is relaxing, and the scenery around the falls is beautiful. We definitely enjoyed our stay here. Ipupa Falls is a series of large waterfalls formed by the Kuneni River on the border between Angola and Namibia. The Kuneni River is around 500 meters wide in this area and drops in a series of waterfalls across a length of around one and a half kilometers, with the greatest drop at around 37 meters high. The word Ipupa is derived from the Herero tribe, which is a word for foam, referring to the foam created by the waterfalls. This area is truly an oasis in an otherwise very barren and arid wilderness. Join us in the next episode as we head to the famous Van Sales Pass. I hope this helps, it's very bad. And get rewarded for our efforts in the exquisite Marion Fluss. Down, down, we go up here.
8 in the morning to 20 to 5. That's a long day, another yeah. long day. <laughs> what an adventure. A massive thank you to brand and product support from 4x4 Mega World Stratum Park, Indiflate, Lassie, Tracks for Africa, Wild Dog 4x4, and Tackler Products. Thank you to you. I'll go get funding legends. This trip just isn't possible without your amazing support.